Hey everyone, I was just putting together some uh, IK for one of the projects and I figured I would make a short video about it. So uh, I'll show you how it works first and then uh, we'll go over it. Uh, so this is the content example that gives you the basis for whatever has happened here and uh, I pretty much had to rework it because that doesn't work for characters really. It's kind of a weird sample. Um, anyway. This is what happens. So you have a button. The button collides with the character or the character collides with the button usually. And that enables the actual IK that follows around. And uh, this is using world space. So it creates issues sometimes, uh, especially when you let go, the value is not reset. So obviously it can use some improvement, but let's go over it to kind of see how this is done. And uh, um, I mean, it works rather well considering how, you know, <laughs> twisted it is. All right, so let's have a look at the character blueprint. First things first, um, let's look at the viewport. So what we have in here is your basic character blueprint because the content example actually doesn't use the character pawn blueprint. Um, so you have a capture component that you could actually use as a default for the uh, collision. However, because often enough the hands are outside of that spectrum, I added a uh, button detector component, which is just a sphere component that will keep track of the initiating overlaps. Uh, the rest is the default that you would find and the mesh assigned, the, there's not even a, it's whatever the mesh from the thing is. Uh, the next thing that we wanna look at is probably the actual code for this, for the blueprint itself. So we have a bit of a uh, functionality with the overlap detection. So the overlap detection, which will check to see if whatever the actor that was overlapped contains uh, an interface, implements the interface. And if it does, it's not going to call to that interface, it's just going to cast to that, to the button and uh, set up our endpoint or in this case set the endpoint to nothing uh, then on thick for testing purposes obviously you would be doing this within an action or so of some kind uh, maybe even with a timeline we are or well realistically you only need to do it once so this doesn't need to be continuous so you just set this position once and you're done um, so we're checking that the endpoint is valid and based on whether the endpoint is valid, we are affecting uh, or setting a location. We're taking the word location of the button endpoint. So let's go look at what the button endpoint is. Um, we'll open up the button blueprint over here and bring it back. So you can see there is no code here. There's no code in the construction script. There's just stuff in the viewport. So we have your basic mesh. I added a collision capsules uh, to this is used to detect the overlap initially as you can see set to overlap all and then at the end I have a button uh, uh, location that I manually position based on where the button goes in real life with the animation because you have to remember and keep in mind one thing you are actually affecting the hand bone and not the finger bone so you're, you're going to have spacing and you need to figure out how that spacing is better suited. Um, these nodes and this animation blueprint, uh, it was reworked from whatever they give you. There was a, a few things removed from here, like the balancing of the hands and whatever. I just wanted to make it work as basic as possible with just the offset and the hand. It uses the animation curve, however. So the animation, uh, wait, where did I get that? The animation here actually has a curve that came with the project and that does a decent job of enabling and disabling the uh, IK. Uh, so this curve is getting offset by a disable value uh, just like we had it in, in this implementation over here. So we just kind of stole from that and plugged it into the chain. Now the event graph is what takes care of setting this. Uh, obviously you will have try to get the pawn owner instead of the get owning actor, but uh, for demo purposes where the character is not moving, this works fine. 
Uh, so we cast to the character as you always do and you get the location and you get the right location. We are checking just to make sure that that value is set and then if that value is set we start to affect the IK. Uh, disable left is set to one which is opposite of what it should be. I should probably rename those but it gives you an idea. So either we track the left end or we don't track the, le the left end depending on whether this value was set in the character blueprint. Um, same thing on the other hand, exact same thing, except for there isn't anything else to do, so the chain stops. Um, now let's have a look at uh, the combination of the two, I suppose. Uh, when you, uh, with, a, with this minimized and this set to I click on play over there, select the character over here, and you can see that the node is not valid now as the collision here triggers in that node becomes valid and this button starts tracking now if i uh, for instance add this to the chain and set the world location for the right hand location it will start to also affect the right hand as you can see here which doesn't look good obviously this is not what it's meant for uh the animation so Keep that in mind, though. That's that's how it works. Uh, pretty easy. Just disconnect that, and we won't have any issue again. Obviously, as I said, you don't want that on the on thick event on a character. You will do the input control, and only affect this uh, or set this once when the action is occurring. I hope that kind of explains it. Uh, and if we break apart this sample just to view the implementation that used to be there. Let me bring up the blueprint, the animation blueprint right here, open in the content browser, and you can have a look at all the stuff that was here with the hand favoring and everything else and the animation graph. So we went from this big old mess to just the last two nodes. And the last two nodes do not use the joint target, they use world space. And that is why you see the remaining location being offset. Um, one thing that you can do is uh, figure out uh, the proper setting of the world location based on the other bones. Usually uh, the bone structures have two sets of bone, an arcade bone and uh, 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 the hand bone. The, uh, the actual blueprints here are affecting the hand location rather than the IK location because the IK is affected by the hand retargeting node over here. So you could actually implement it with this node somewhat by working around other things. And I don't, I do not believe that adding this will actually change anything in terms of. Uh, uh, let's try it. You hear Don then said, "Paste this in here." We're going to grab the location component there, paste it into the final value there, and we'll see if it makes any difference at all to the uh, final result here. It's a little, the day animation is a little heavier, but it seems like it's tracking all right. As you can see, left, right forward back and even up and down because you know world space well up to a certain point uh, because the animation and down uh, pretty much a lot I believe it's a result of the joint that it doesn't go up but it wouldn't look good going up anyway without moving the rest of the chain so I'm not worried about that all right Hope that helps somebody.